Hello, beautiful people. My name is Angela, and I'm from British Columbia, Canada. You're watching Trucker Josh and the Diesel Weasel. We've got Chevy along on this trip. Right? We left Diesel at home. You excited to be here, Chef? You're such a big boy. Such a good boy. Big handsome boy. Look at you. Look at you, man. Gotta keep the doors locked at night so all the, the female dogs don't come trying to break in here and get at you. Man. Used to have the same problem myself. <laughs> no, I never did. But he did. He's a good looking dog. So today is Monday. There was no video yesterday, so if you're going back to try to figure out how I made it here, we're in Brooks, Alberta, uh, from home. The last time you saw me, we were at home. Uh, there is no video for that, because yesterday was Sunday. I don't make video or content or do any editing or anything on Sundays. So, I'll fill you in. We drove from there, at home, around the Winnipeg, Manitoba area in Southeast Manitoba, to here, to Brooks, Alberta, to Southeast Alberta. I'll put the map on the screen here for you. So it was a full day of driving, about 600 miles, 1,000 kilometers. And today is Monday. Today we got to get to work. We have four deliveries to get off our truck today. We have our three glass drops. Uh, there was four drops, but that turned into three because two of them are combined into one apparently. So that's a bonus. We have three glass drops, and then I got to drop off all of that other weird stuff. Uh, that they added onto my trailer. Oh, uh, well, I don't even know what it was. I don't like it because it's got sharp edges. I gotta be so careful with it. It's very fragile, it's very brittle. And in order to tie it down tight enough, uh, you gotta do it just right so it doesn't bend it. It's very frustrating and I had to tarp it all. But uh, it turned out all right. Yesterday was a good day, nice relaxing day. We just sort of just took a deep breath and just rolled down the highway. It was really nice. So today's gonna be a very busy day. It's gonna be a typical Monday, so we better get at it. Fluffle coming up here. What is this? Somebody is moving. That's not a house. That's a that's a business. That's like a, a big office. Let's see if we can get closer here. That is a ginormous building they are moving. I saw them turn onto the highway quite a ways ahead of me there. We're just all catching up to them now. They picked up speed pretty quickly and now this van is scared and come on buddy. Come on, buddy, I know you're a handy bus, but you can do the speed limit. Come on. I don't want to get too close behind you, bud. Let's get by these people. That's one thing that bothers me when there's a, a, a unit like this on the highway. People are sort of scared to get by. If the, if the vehicle like this red pickup truck, you're going to see there's two of them. If they don't stop you from passing, that means you can pass. All right? If they don't want you to pass them, they will block you. Oh, and there's a scale here. Is this scale open? No, nope, scale is closed. Okay, good. See, now, if these guys didn't want me to pass this guy, these pickups here would cut in front of me and prevent me from passing. But seeing as they're all keeping right, that means they got the go, they're giving me the go ahead to pass. They're on the radio with this truck driver up here telling him that we're coming past. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, they're all communicating with each other, so if you pull out to pass them, they don't get in your way. Just go past them. Don't be scared. Just get by as quickly as you can without speeding. Don't sit beside them for like three miles, slowly passing them. That's my advice. I don't know. Maybe some of you who haul freight like that could enlighten everyone in the comments section. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's 
maybe that's not right, but for me, if the pilot vehicles or the, the chase vehicle doesn't prevent me from passing, I'm coming on fast. Coming up Blackfoot Trail here in the southeast of Calgary, you can see downtown off to the left in front of us there. It's amazing how much the skyline has changed just in my lifetime. And the Calgary Tower, which is sort of like a in my ver in my view, like a small version of the Toronto CN Tower, it's just the Calgary Tower. It used to be the tallest building in Calgary. Now it's one of the smallest. <laughs> it's sort of like just this big, uh, it's behind the trees there right now. You guys know what the CN Tower is, right? It's uh, sort of like a, I don't know if it's a restaurant or whatnot, way up on the top of a big pole, pretty much. Just a tall building with a lookout on the top. And it's not an office building or anything, it's just, a touristy place, I guess, where you can sort of look down on the city in downtown. I don't know if you can see it there off to the left. That's Calgary Tower. I can't zoom in that far, I don't think. Yeah, it used to be the tallest building. Now it's one of the smallest. In 700 meters, turn left on 42 Avenue Southeast. And Calgary is my favorite Canadian city. I love it here. It's right by the mountains. It's a clean city. There's no bad areas of the city compared to Winnipeg. Remember, I'm coming, basing everything off of Winnipeg where, you know, there's certain areas. You just don't go through at night. Uh -huh, the North End. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You just don't want to end up in some areas at the wrong time because, you know, you'll get stabbed. But Calgary doesn't seem to have neighborhoods of the same level of crime. They take care of their city. They have proper roadways. Their freeways make sense. Their roadways make sense. Winnipeg, there's like seven different cities that built into one and none of the city planners talked to each other while they were planning. So none of the roads meet up and make sense. There's no good way to get through the city. For the size that Winnipeg is, it should not have the traffic congestion that it does. Calgary is just built better. It's a bit of a newer city, but it's a lot bigger. I think there's what, correct me if I'm wrong, Calgarians, 1.3, 1.5 million people in the city. Over a million people though, right? This is home of the Calgary Flames, NHL, uh, Calgary Stampeders, CFL. Turn left on 42 Avenue Southeast. And home to a lot of good people, a lot of nice people here. I mean, they're everywhere in Canada, but. I'm a little biased, I really like Calgary. My sister was born here, did you know that? My sister Cheryl, My uh, I have two older sisters. The one, there was my older sister Rose and my uh, other older sister Cheryl. Rose is the oldest of my sisters and Cheryl is uh, the middle child. She was born here. Whoa, 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 buddy. Continue 1,000 meters, then turn Easy. right on the trail southeast. Hopefully it's easy to get to with the truck. I should have looked at Google Maps before I got into the city. I usually look at Google Earth or Google Maps and then Street View on my phone just to make sure that I know where I'm going and where the docks are, where the loading zone is or receiving. It's amazing how much that helps. Oh, we're just winging it this time. Look at the little tiny little puppy. Look at him, look at him go. We going so we're going to McCloyd Trail and turning right and this is like closer to downtown than I thought it would be we're still a little ways away but definitely don't feel comfortable that I didn't look at Google Earth first that's my advice to all of you guys out there before you go into a, an area or a receiver or shipper, before you go anywhere into a city that you're not familiar with, look it up on Google Earth on your phone and then go into Street View just to make sure you know where you're going. And you're not left all in a ball of anxiety when you get there and don't know if you'll be able to fit in with a truck or not. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Oh, it's McLeod. Is it McLeod or is it McCloyd? McLeod? McLeod. I guess it's McLeod. Turning on to McLeod. Okay. What next? Right turn in 850 meters. Okay. Where are we? There's 
pawn shop. 700 meters. Turn right on 34 Avenue Southeast. Seven Eleven, McDonald's. Hey, there you got a McDonald's. You know you're good to go. I don't eat there very much anymore, though. That doesn't make me feel good. Still have no idea. Okay, so what? Five hundred meters, half a kilometer. We gotta turn right. I hope it's a proper truck route. If not. It's gonna be a little interesting. Okay, so not this street here, the next one. Okay. That was 36th, we wanna go on to 34th. The very next one. Right where that Jeep's going, I guess. Stampede Park? What? Turn right on 34 Avenue Southeast. Oh, this one right here. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Not Luckily, there's no one beside me. I can button hook it a little bit. Okay. Okay, yeah, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Oh, I'm glad the traffic wasn't too bad right there. I had to swing a little wide to get in here. I believe we're delivering right up here. I'm gonna park. It says no parking. Oh, I could I could put on my park anywhere and get away with it lights and go in and figure out where I'm supposed to deliver this. Stressful morning, stressful morning. <laughs> So as you know, I only had, what, four, five, six, seven pieces on my trailer of glass, right? The rest is all that extra stuff that I wasn't too excited about either, but we're doing it. So I'm at my second delivery now. It is 2.30, 2.40 in the afternoon, something like that. And uh, I should have been completely empty by now. The first delivery I got to this morning took over four hours to unload four crates. And it really wasn't that complicated. It was... Uh, Four crates. I don't know if they've never unloaded glass before. I understand they want to be careful. It's glass. They don't want to break it. They got to be very careful. That's a big waste and expensive. But at the same time, four pieces of glass on average, I would say, usually takes about 20 minutes to unload after I get the tarps off and rolled up, right? In 20 minutes or so. Over four hours after I had the tarps off and rolled up well so that pushed my whole day back so now I'm at my second delivery when I should be empty the next delivery I have is the last piece of glass I've called that guy and he's gonna wait around for me thank God and he's just around the corner here pretty much from where I am now and uh, the crew I got unloading me here at this second delivery awesome they have two packages they've been working on me for less than five minutes they're almost done already so I'm just gonna go around the corner. I don't even have to tarp it. And I got one more package of glass to deliver. The guy's waiting there for me and uh, the rest I'll deliver tomorrow. So at least I'll get the glass off my truck and I don't have to re-tarp it for night, right? I took the tarps off this morning and then if it was gonna rain, I was gonna re-tarp it. But it's been a nice sunny day until now, but now it looks like it might rain this evening. So I'd, if I had that last piece on my truck overnight, I'd have to tarp it overnight so it doesn't get all wet, right? But this way, Thank God he's gonna unload me. What a stressful day. I mean, I knew what they were doing wrong, why it was taking so long, and I was trying to kindly tell them how to, you know, cut corners, well not cut corners, how to do it properly without cutting corners, like just how to take it off quickly, but they wouldn't listen. And they, <laughs> and I was getting uh, frustrated, but I was trying not to let it show. I didn't want to be rude. But it was so simple. I, was, I just told him, you just have to lift this one up, pull it to the edge of the deck, put your forks in a little further, pull it off, put it on the ground, you're done. No, I tried, I tried, and they seemed to just get frustrated that I was trying to tell them what to do. I guess they didn't want me to tell them how to do their job. But I got out of there, I didn't say anything stupid. I held my tongue, I didn't be, I wasn't rude. And uh, we got unloaded. Oh, here we are, that's the story of my day. I'll fill you in a little bit more in a bit. I gotta get out there now and uh, they just finished unloading me. Less than 10 minutes. Less than, I like these guys. I like these guys, they're fast, they know what they're doing. So I got all my glass delivered today. All this extra stuff is gonna be delivered tomorrow. We're waiting on an appointment time. And then I got a load of lumber, like I told you, going down to Fargo, North Dakota. And then from there, I've got another load of glass coming back to Edmonton. So we're pretty booked up. 
I'm gonna go to the Husky here and catch our breath a little bit. We've been running around all day. We'll grab a coffee, figure out what we're gonna do. Looks like this Husky is open again, so that's good. It was closed last time we were here. I guess they were just doing renovations or something. It's gonna thread the needle through the pumps here and try and find us a good parking spot in the back. Preferably where we won't have a neighbor. Look at how these people don't park straight. Nobody parks straight. Why don't you park straight? Everybody's all over the place. It's just a free for all. I'm gonna go between these trucks. I gotta pick who I want to line up with, right? Because either way, I'm gonna look crooked. I'll line up with this guy on my left. There we go. No neighbors. The way life was meant to be. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I was able to catch my breath there, sort of just relax, get lost on Facebook for about a half hour, sort of do nothing. Whenever I have a really busy day and I just rush, 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 rush all day, I just need a little bit of a wind down time at the end of the day. So I looked up where I'm going to be delivering this other freight. It's in the southeast part of Calgary, pretty much down the road from the Flying J that's in the southeast corner there. So I'm gonna go to the Flying J where I can have a shower tonight. I gotta fuel up my truck first and then have a shower. And then I can use their internet to upload some videos and watch some Netflix maybe. Even though Netflix has been kind of disappointing me lately, you know, every single new movie or show that comes out of Netflix seems to have that, you know, that progress the progressive agenda. You know what I'm talking about, right? Just shoved in your face and every single episode and every single Netflix movie and Netflix original, it's just, it's the same thing in every one. Just four kilometers, then turn left onto highway to south. It's like... I said that in the other day, you know, where like uh, one of the biggest exports that America has is their culture, right? And it's not really the American culture, it's the Silicon Valley culture. They have it in all their entertainment and their movies and especially things like uh, Netflix, uh, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. These are all companies that are all based within 300 miles of each other in Silicon Valley. And the culture in Silicon Valley is completely different really than anywhere in the US. At least it used to be. It used to be like that was the fringe. The weirdos, you know? No offense to anyone living there. I know you're not all weird. And you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. The people that live there especially know what I'm talking about. Beautiful state. I love going there, but... Uh, everything that seems to come out of Netflix. So I don't know if I'll watch Netflix or not. They got some really good shows. You just sort of got to look past the agenda that's being pushed towards you and, you know, sort of ignore all those other stuff that they're trying to normalize and throw at you. It's just, I don't know if they realize it. You know, the rest of the world doesn't really see things that way. But they're trying. They're trying to get us to. Not going to work. Look at this. Would you look at this? An actual freeway. Calgary. You know how to build roads properly. Much bigger city than Winnipeg, though. It's hard to see how Winnipeg's gonna grow. Like, Winnipeg is growing a lot, but the, the roads make like, no sense. I can just see that city being a just nest of confusion in another century when the city has grown so much. They're gonna have to knock down so much of the old city just to build proper freeways into the center of the city. Otherwise, it's gonna take like five hours just to get downtown from anywhere on those skirts. Oh, well, I gotta get out of this lane. Excuse me, signal device activated, come on. Thank you, Mr. Dodge. There you go. See, there are still some people out there that know what blinkers mean and know what they're used for. Quickly grab some fuel here and find as good a parking spot as we can find. This Flying J, uh, <clears throat> Flying J here's got a little bit of a unique entrance, I find. I don't know. It's a little Arriving confusing. Flying J on right. Especially if you haven't been here before. The first time I came here, like almost 10 years ago already, I guess, maybe more. 
I found it a little bit confusing. But it is what it is. 200 meters. Then turn left on 116 Avenue Southeast. So from here, I think we're five kilometers away. Yeah, five kilometers are like three miles away from our uh, delivery point. I still don't know when I'm supposed to deliver this stuff tomorrow. Maybe they'll let me know in the morning. I was hoping to know tonight so that I know when to... Uh, When to be there, you know? Because if they want me there at 7 in the morning, it'd be nice to know so I get up on time. But if they only want me there at 1 in the afternoon, well, that's nice to know too. And here we'll sit until tomorrow. I still don't have an appointment time. Doesn't look like we're going to get one today. I'll probably have to wait till the morning. And they'll figure it out then. Well, at least I got to go in the truck stop here. I'm right in the front row, which is pretty awesome. I got a nice spot here so I can pick up their Wi-Fi best I can see how good it is here and uh, I guess we'll check in with you tomorrow really disappointed that our first delivery took so long but uh, trucking right so now it probably won't be first thing in the morning either that I'll get to unload this it'll probably be like midday and then I gotta quickly run over to sundry it and grab that lumber and then I just got my load assignment my next one that lumber is going to Fargo for Thursday and then uh, today is Monday. I've got to be there Thursday. Still got some time to get there. And then I got a load out of Otana again. Coming back to Edmonton. Did I tell you this already? I can't even remember what I told you. I've probably tell you the same thing twice. Oh well. Tune in tomorrow, guys. If you do like my videos, you like all my weird sense of humor and my rants, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and the bell beside that just so that you get notifications when I upload a new video. If you want to be featured in the front of one of my videos in one of those intros, you can send it to the email address listed below in the description, tjv at email.com. I always love including you guys in the vlogs. Just broke my truck. Nope, fixed. A lot of sirens going on right now, distracting me at the end of my vlog. Fire trucks. Oh, there comes an ambulance too. Shoot. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I hate to end on that note, but I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hi, I'm Russ. And I'm Meg. And, and this, this is Coco. Coco. And, and we're, we're from, from County Wexford, Wexford Ireland. Ireland. And you're, you're watching, watching Trucker Josh, Josh on YouTube. YouTube.